Ladies and gentlemen, welcome yourselves back to Transport Fever 2. My name, of course, is Open Potato, and uh, and we are having a lovely little look at the uh, the Metropolitan Center that is Burnley. Now, uh, if you'll recall, Burnley, I think, I think, is the largest city on the map. Yep, largest city on the map by a fairly large margin of 40 people. Uh, second, of, uh, second in second place, of course, is uh, is Gravesend. Gravesend. We're going to be working on Gravesend in a bit, but you know, for now. Let's let's talk about let's talk about Burnley. Right. So in Burnley, we are satisfying uh, a good chunk of the machine machine demand, uh, and that is being done through the wonderful super highway that we constructed just a couple of episodes ago. Uh, we're connecting up the Sutton Coldfield Machines Factory with the well. It's it bypasses most of Burnley, but it uh, but it plugs into the sort of second side, and I think it's I think it's this depot right over here that uh, that the, the machine parts are dropped off at. Anyway, so. We're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well on that front, so can't really complain. Uh, we're we're not doing super great on the whole goods front, but uh, but as you'll recall, the goods are currently delivered via air, and I'm I'm unconvinced that that's the best way of doing it. I mean, I know it's not the best way of doing it, but as we get larger and larger planes, uh, I think that that will probably continue to evolve, and our sort of strategy of of dropping off goods in uh, in Burnley will definitely change doesn't particularly matter for now because the whole point of me explaining this to you is uh, is is really just an excuse to talk about how uh, Burnley is such a great city it's such a large city there's so much going for it however the point that I was trying to make is that there is really there is really nothing there is really nothing in in terms of like train train capability that can be that can be that can be achieved in Burnley we have a simple a simple, simple, simple two-platform uh, two, two platform standard speed track. We don't have any high-speed capability. And that is what I want to try and change today. We want to try and give Burnley its first, and maybe only, maybe, dare I say, only high-speed line. So, uh, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to go into here, and we're going to see if we can try and lay a little bit of high-speed track. Um, I'd love to be able to see... Yep. Okay, good. I don't know why you're a little bit slow sometimes, video game, but that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, are we able to lay two tracks in this in this location? Two tracks and a passenger platform by any chance? In the distance between the airport? Okay, I mean that is that is absolutely fantastic. So basically we can get a dual high speed track in this in this space here, which is absolutely wonderful and is something that I'm going to be that I'm definitely going to be doing. Uh, we're going to make it electric, even though I'm unconvinced that we actually need it to be electric. I'm also going to just briefly uh, introduce some some of these wonderful... I don't know, what, are, what are they referred to as? Platform roofs? They are purely decorative, so they are, uh, they are literally just for show. And it's also kind of a little bit jarring because the, the, old, the old style of roofs don't match with the, the new sort of I don't know, what is this corrugated iron sort of style of roof, as opposed to the old slate style of roof? It doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, the real the real reason behind this was we want to try and get a high-speed line. Where is that high-speed line going to go, I hear you ask? Well, uh, we just take a quick little glance at the station, and we can see that the Burnley to Cleobury Mortimer Express has far and away the most people waiting uh, on the platform. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and introduce a high-speed line from Cleobury Mortimer all the way out to Burnley. You with me? You with me so far? That's what we're going to try and do. Okay, this is not a good sign. This is not a good sign that we're colliding with the airport. I don't know why it's saying that we're colliding with the airport, because we shouldn't be. Can I, uh, can I raise up this land a little bit? Look, delete some of this... Delete some of this foliage, and then give me a little bit of a, a little bit of a better, a better opportunity to aim my mouse, because I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty certain that I, 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 f I mean, I'm, I say I'm pretty certain. I'm not pretty certain, but I feel like we should be able to achieve this. Uh, let me bump up the strength a little bit. Doesn't look like I can modify this terrain around this specific location for some obscure reason. But let me see if that's made enough of a difference. It's it's weird. It's it's weird. I mean, I can get away with certain angles, but not not other angles.
All right, let me see if I can if I can modify the height somewhat and if that'll change the if that'll change the success or failure conditions of this. No, not even if I was to not even if I was to create a bridge here. I mean, that is super disappointing if that's if that's not going to allow me under any circumstances to to do this. I mean, that is that just feels that just feels wrong. It might be it might be the fact that this is a hold up. Let me let me see if I can try and do something. Can I configure this? Can I configure this runway to work in the opposite direction? Because I feel like it might be a landing issue. It might be that this specific area isn't actually marked out as like required to be flat. Although I think that that's why I can't modify the terrain. I think it's because I think it's because the the aircraft needs to get access to, to land in the area. That's really, really interesting. And there's presumably no, like, depth that I can achieve that will allow me to decrease that much. Uh, okay, I mean, this is, this is fine, this is fine. We need to just sort of shift into a different, a different sort of mode. So, there are slight modifications that we can make in order to make this work, I think. Right, so this is a this is a little bit of a challenge, but this is okay. Right, the great thing about modular modular platforms is that we can configure exactly where yeah, we can figure we can configure where the platform ends and where the platform starts. So even though these two platforms are completely parallel and, and work completely as they should. Uh, there's nothing stopping us from just extending the platforms back by another square over here. I mean, I say there's nothing. There is a bridge which is in the way, but that bridge looks kind of stupid anyway, and um, and I'd be happy to change it around if, if and when it was required. Right, so if I decrease that, yes. That is brilliant. Okay, so give me a little test here. Yep, that's looking good. That's looking absolutely exceptional. So it will sort of play some sort of havoc with the initial bit of track. But I actually think that going going into a tunnel there, it actually saves us quite a lot of hassle. It actually saves us a heck of a lot of hassle. Yeah, so I think we're gonna do that. I think we're gonna do that straight off the bat, actually. Yeah, that's that's a, that's actually looking fairly respectable. And we get that 300 kilometer an hour speed, which is what we are so desperately after. Anyway, uh, that's that. We still need to take this platform back by a little bit, and I don't think we're able to take it back by another another bit of track. So let's just delete this bit of bridge. There we go, as the autosave as the autosave goes there. Uh, and then let's configure this platform. Let's configure it so that it works with uh, with the station as well. Brilliant, and we'll go platforms. We stick down two of the finest passenger platforms, or at least we try to, but the game is of course a little bit a little bit glitchy when it does this. I don't understand why, but there we go. Uh, can I put down a passenger building as well? Can I put down a passenger building over here? I feel like that just sort of completes the look, you know? Sure. Put that down over there. I feel like that's a, uh, you know, that's 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 paying homage to our uh, to our lovely, wonderful, super high-end customers who we value and we want to we want to make sure that they stick around. Right? Am I ever gonna be able to get a bridge? Wow! I do not believe it. I was a way to say, am I able to ever get a bridge to cross this divide? And as it turns out, I am absolutely able to do that. I did not expect that to be anywhere near as easy as that. Uh, technically, I should have made sure that that was upgraded so that we can survive, uh, so we can allow the trams to cross. Wow. Okay. I mean, that is a that is an absolutely brilliant bit of uh, of architecture right there. That is quite something. I like it. I almost wish that that pillar didn't exist in that location, but I mean, I'm not gonna complain. Not at all. In fact, under no circumstances is this is this a, a situation that I complain about. That is that is just straight up all around good. Okay, 
So this is it. This is what we've got going for us. I'm I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pretty happy with the the sort of the sort of nature of the this underground tunnel. We're gonna have to bring this around really really slowly in order to maintain the 300 kilometer an hour top speed. Yep, and that is something which maybe we should maybe we should consider going underground this lake under 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 underground over this lake uh that maybe wouldn't be the worst idea in the world my my thought process was oh we're just gonna jewel we're just gonna jewel this line you know we're just gonna add a line right next to it which goes at 300 kilometers an hour uh, that presents us with a couple of problems first of all we use bridges fairly extensively on this route i say fairly extensively We've got one major bridge right over here. And also, this route isn't very straight. It isn't very straight at all. Uh, so we're going to need to clearly do a little bit of landscaping. I say clearly. We're going to need to do a little bit of landscaping probably near Cleobury Mortimer. Uh, but upon second reflection, I'm quite prepared to let this high speed... To let this high speed train just sort of continue underground for now. Yeah, so we'll do that. Let me see if we can... Okay... We're going to need to go deeper, apparently, according to my calculations. But, I mean, we still want to try and converge. Is that is that underground? That's, un that's entirely underground. I mean, it's very close to not being underground. But... Okay, that's definitely not underground. But yeah, that's that's pretty underground. Okay, I mean, that's 300 kilometers an hour across the entirety of the track. I think I'm happy with that. I don't like how much of this track is underground. But, I mean, if needs must, right, then, you know, we've just got to do... We've just got to do what we've got to do. Uh, right, so the track is going to emerge at this point here. Am I happy with that? I mean, I don't love it. I'm okay with tunnels, though. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with tunnels under any circumstances. It's just bridges. Bridges, which I'm which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I think we'll take the tunnel out at that point. Or we'll take... Well, there's going to be a little micro-tunnel created here. But, I mean, I'm fine with that. That's 2.4 million. That seems like quite a lot of money. But, I mean, under normal circumstances, I think I'm just going to... I'm just going to accept it. The... Station in Cleobury Mortimer is going to be a real challenge. That's going to be a real challenge. In fact, what are we currently using this station for? We're not using this station for anything other than the regular... The regular service. I mean, that to me says this is an opportunity to just, like, convert this station to completely high speed. I mean, the whole reason for delivering passengers to this city in the first place was because, you know, it was also, it was a fairly large city, and, uh, it was, it was kind of a little bit of a, little bit of a passenger hub. Holy cow, how did we lose 11 million, 11 million dollars? Right, there we go. Just wait until I got a little bit of, a little bit of cash in the tank. Yeah, so what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna just pretty much just entirely change this, this, uh, this kit, this, kit this platform out, so to speak, entirely for high-speed electric, even if we don't end up using electric again. As I say, it's still kind of useful to do. But there's no there's no reason that we don't sort of modify this to be completely high-speed. I think it would just be too much of a faff to faff around with another, um, another platform. There's just not, a, there's just not enough space here unless I want to, like, seriously change up Cleobury Mortimer. You never know. Cleobury Mortimer, as I've said, I've talked a little bit about how in the past I wanted it to be a little bit of a hub. I mean, I feel like I've sort of drifted away from the idea of Cleobury Mortimer actually being a hub. And now I just sort of see it as the... the sort of... the other end. The other end of the Burnley Express. Excuse me? There we go. Okay. So, how likely are we to see 300 kilometers an hour? We are pretty likely, in fact. That's that's pretty darn good. Okay, we're just going to take up all of this track. Yep. And to be honest, that's actually a good thing. I mean, this track over here is particularly, particularly bad looking. 
Right. We're aiming for 300 kilometers an hour. I mean, where do we want to, like, try and come out? We can always just sort of cut straight across... Straight across here, and we, I guess we could come out, like, at this mount of this mountain, right, right over here. I mean, that probably would be a fairly good route to take. And actually, it ends up impacting the land in a much more... Well, much more, I feel anyway, much more respectful way than than the previous track did. I mean, this track still looks like absolute garbage. So that would be good to change, if at all possible. Right, let me have a little look. Let me just sort of test out... I mean, that is going to give me a bridge, which I obviously am not going to follow through on. But, I mean, the route looks fundamentally pretty straight. I mean, it would give me 300 kilometers an hour the entire way. I mean, obviously, it's giving me a bunch of collision nonsense. But I think, I think that's what we want to do. I think that's what we want to do. Absolutely. Okay, so. I mean, that's not what I want to do. Let's go hook that up. Let's go hook this up. There we go. $800,000. That's quite a large amount of money. Uh, Burnley Clearbury Mortimer Express is clearly not happy. Train 33 is also not happy, but that's you're not happy because I've just completely deleted your, your route. Maybe you never know. Maybe we will reconnect up the, the old traditional line, but... Ah, it's sort of like a secondary purpose for now. I, I kind of maybe want to, like, maintain uh, this... I kind of want to maybe maintain this route purely for, like, posterity's sake. It's not like we've got any special locomotives on this line or anything. But I, I feel like it's done a... It's done a pretty darn good job. It's done a pretty darn good job just over the years. Right, so this is a little bit of a challenge. We're going to have to... We're going to have to build... We're going to have to build what I would consider to be a fairly straight bit of track. However, we're also going to have to do it in a way... There we go. We're also going to have to do it in a way where we link up with... Am I... Sorry, am I building left, left to left here? Or am I building something else to something else? I'm building right here. Okay. I'm building the right track. Just need to make sure that that's... That's clear to everyone. Okay, that looks good. That looks fine. Doesn't look like we're messing up the the environment in any major sort of way. So that's quite nice. Auto save. Yeah, thanks for interrupting my jam. All right, that looks good. And now we want to try and bring I mean, how on earth are we going to get this yeah, that's actually not too bad. That's actually completely fine. Right, now can I link this up and still have 300 kilometers an hour? I cannot. I can not. Right. Let me take this back a little bit. Let me take this back a little bit. Let me take out a loan of, I don't know, a million dollars or something. Something to tide me over. Right, what's the sort of angle that we're going to need in order to make sure that this is... Oh, it's close. That's That's really close. We're going to have to take it back a little bit, I think. Right, we take it back to that level. How does that look? That's, that's looking pretty good. No major sort of terrain shenanigans occurring. Let's build it. And then let's see if it links up. That links up and it looks pretty darn good. All right, I think that I think that's our route. I think that's our route. You got to bear in mind is that this track will stay here, but I'm gonna make sure that the signaling priorities always favor high speed trains. So under no circumstances, I say under no circumstances, under very few circumstances, will uh, will sort of standard traffic ever prioritize the high-speed traffic. We've also got the opportunity to, like, make bridges or whatever. I probably need a little bit more money, don't I? Uh, we've got the opportunity to make bridges for the traditional track. Since I don't really care about the speed of the old trains, uh, only the speed, about, uh, speed of the high trains, 
the the high speed trains. The high trains, that's 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 completely that's a completely different batch of trains. Right. Collision. That should not be the case. Ah, it's just prohibitively expensive. I see. And then let's continue on. Brilliant. Yeah, you know what? I mean, this may look like a heck of a lot of money that I'm spending, and it actually is. But I mean, this is the first this is the first like proper route where it's actually it's actually 300 kilometers an hour from end to end. Like there's there's not there's no other there's there's no other track I don't think that currently that currently does that. Right. Link up there. Brilliant. Okay, I mean that is that is a legitimate high speed line. Unfortunately, a lot of it is underground. I don't like that. I'm not a fan. Uh, but the terrain modification is, I mean, far, far, far reduced on the original, on the original line. This original line is, uh, is garbage, actually. Let me see if I can link this original line back into the high-speed line. I mean, obviously, the high-speed line gets priority. I tell you what, I think I actually might be able to. Yeah. Okay, I didn't really expect that to be possible, but... Kind of cool that I'm able to do it. Uh, I mean, why not, right? Why not? Why not? Let's link it back on up. Maybe we can even continue to run the, uh, the old bog standard service. I don't know, I don't know what the logistics of that actually are, but, uh, but there you go. Why is construction not possible here? It's imminently possible. I, I mean, I can see that it's possible. Okay, it's possible up to there. And it's possible up to... Th well, there you go. Just like that, video game. Just like that. Okay, so no high-speed... No non-high-speed rail should touch the high-speed trains at all. But, I mean, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool... Uh, there is a problem with the line. The line problem probably relates to the fact that there is no crossover over here. Which is a bit of a problem and not something that I actually considered. Yeah, uh, this maybe is going to make merging the two tracks a little bit more challenging. Let me take, take those two tracks back just a little bit. Right, let me get the crossover sorted first. Right. Let's deal with it in as short order as we possibly can. Brilliant. And then... Let's just merge. Let's just merge in. You know what? I'm not super bothered about the speed. But, I mean, it would be nice to, like, maintain as much speed as we possibly can. There we go. I mean, we pretty much ended up taking the taking the track out and then immediately replacing it in a very very similar fashion uh, just with the crossover points so you know on the whole that that could have been that could have been a heck of a lot worse so that goes in there that goes in there those need to both be one way yep yeah those need to both be one way sort that out that that's a really inconvenient little bridge uh but that sort of deals with that sort of deals with that the cleobury mortimer express very cool very 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 cool uh yeah as i say not entirely sure if we want to delete that old service but it seems like something that maybe we should probably probably do uh speaking of services that we want to delete what on earth is going to be the what on earth is going to be the locomotive for this job? Also, where am I going to put the depot? I think I'm going to have to put the depot, like, in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Uh, let me think about this just briefly. That goes there. That goes there. And I didn't put that as one way. What am I doing? Didn't set that as one way. Right. So. That's going to mean... 
Yeah. And just checking the directionality. That goes there. I'm gonna make this high speed just for aesthetic purposes more than anything else. Why not, right? Uh, and then let's have a little look at what vehicles exactly we can buy for this line. I mean, we've got, obviously, the opportunity to use an electric train. However, the more that I think about it... I mean, we've tried with the... We tried with the Alco PA, if you'll remember, over on the Grimsby line. Or the, I don't know, the, the island the island hopper line. What It wasn't called an island hopper line. And I, again, like, just reverted to the, to the Pioneer Zephyr. And I still think, I still think that that's our best bet. I think we just try and have, like, a bunch of them on this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow, I don't know, $14 million or something. I'm going to put $14 million. Yep. Buy and buy. And can I equip these guys to the... No, I'm going to need to make, I'm going to need to make a brand new line. I was waiting to say, can I equip them to the Cleobury Mortimer line? But the problem with the Cleobury Mortimer line is that they will both want to use the same platform. So let's make, let's make line 14. Yes, don't, just don't, don't look at all of the lines that I haven't renamed. Oh, you think that you're going to, you think that you're going to be traveling slow speed? Well, just wait until you, just wait until you see what I've got in store for you. Uh, right, so, in Burnley, we're going to need to use platform... Wait, hold up, what? Well, I can't use... Oh, I can use platform 3. And I can use platform 4. Alright, so that seems to be giving us a way back. But not a way there. So from Burnley to Clearbury Mortimer, there seems to be, there seems to be an issue. No, I'm not going, I'm not going that way, that way that you're after. It's just not happening. Ah, I see what the problem is. I know what the problem is. The problem is, is that there is no crossover point at Burnley. Yep, yeah, that's the issue. So because of the signals that I've, that I've set for you, you're not going to allow yourself to cross, uh, to cross over and work properly. That's fine. I can get some crossover. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. That's fine. One way, yes. Autosave, also yes. I mean, the autosave is a blessing and a curse, isn't it? You know, you always, you always want to rely on the autosave for bad circumstances, but you also, right, you also just don't want to, don't want to ever, ever autosave. Right, so this is the high-speed... High speed, Burnley, to Cleo, Bury, Mortimer. I spelt it Mortimer. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's Mortim, Mortimer, though. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Uh, what did I, what did I even, what did I name it? High speed. There we go. There we go. Okay, I mean that looks that looks to be rooting up absolutely fine. No issues there whatsoever. I think we just dispatch both of these trains onto the routes. There we go. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have a little look at the economics of the situation. I'm almost certain that I'm going to elect to destroy the old route at some point. That's right. That's right, what an absolutely gorgeous train, eh? I still can't believe that there is still nothing better than this train. I mean, it is an absolute piece of work. It, it really is fantastic. It really is phenomenal. And it's perfect as well. It's just perfect. It looks the part. It's it's brilliant. Uh, it's diesel as well, actually, which is, which is nice. Means that it doesn't need to run on expensive electrified wire. Uh, but that's okay, because I've just built a whole bunch of expensive electrified wire. What can I say? Also, I think that we should get more trains on this route, Line 9. Um, let's rename this to the actual Island Hopper. There we go. The actual Island Hopper line. 
I feel like that's a much more respectful title. Um, although, in fairness, the, the it doesn't actually island hop for the last little bit, but hey-ho. How many, how many trains do we have on this route at the moment? Only, only two, and I, I bet my bottom dollar that there's a heck of a lot of passengers waiting. Yeah, 132 passengers waiting over there, uh, in Burnley. 140, 152 waiting in Grimsby. About 60 waiting at Hinor and Los, Losco. And, uh, 21 waiting at Wareham. And then a very, very small number at Witham. With Witham. So we do need more. We do need more. We do need more vehicles on that route for sure. Okay, is there any demand? Is there any demand for my new service? High speed Clearbury Mortimer. None yet. None yet. But I'm sure there will be. I'm sure there absolutely will be. I tell you what. Why don't I get a brand new? What am I looking for? Yeah. Uh, why don't I get a brand new? A brand new Zephyr. In fact, two brand new Zephyrs for the actual island hopper route. There we go. Two brand new Zephyrs for the actual island hopper route. What could possibly go wrong? Well, you want a list of things that could go wrong? I mean, the, the, the thing that could go most wrong is, of course, the the oversupply of, uh, of train carriages, of, of passenger seats. That could go wrong. But I hope it doesn't. Uh, Burnley to the Cleobury Mortimer Express. Uh, let's let's shut this down. Uh, let's let's shut it down. Let's let's shut it down. Do I want to shut it down? I feel like I feel like I kind of do. I tell you what I want to do. I tell you what I want to do. I want to manage this line. I want to delete this line. Vehicles on the line. Okay, well, that's somewhat of a problem. Uh, let me get you to go to the depot. Unable to find a path to the depot. Okay. Uh, what I was basically going to say is, why don't we rename this the Burnley to Cleobury Mortimer Express? Because I kind of like that name. Let me manage the line. In fact, no. Manage the vehicles on the line. Burnley to Cleobury Mortimer Express. You two guys go to the depot. Let me then ditch this line. There we go. And then let's rename this to the Burnley to Cleobury Mortimer Express. We'll even get that horrible pink color that it used to be, they used to look like. Uh, the whole point is that I kind of like the name. I kind of like the name. I kind of want to keep the name. I kind of want to keep the name, and I think that I probably should have just replaced... I probably should have just replaced the original service with the high-speed service. We will get a good number of passengers. I would fully expect to get a good number of passengers. This way, we end up losing a bunch of our passengers, but, I mean, look, it's a price that I'm perfectly willing to pay. It's This, this route was probably not going to be profitable. Well, it would have been profitable straight away, but now it's not going to be profitable straight away. But I'm okay with that. That's, that's a price that I'm perfectly willing to pay. And uh, I'm just going to have to live with, unfortunately. Anyway, that's kind of by the by. Look at this. We're getting we're getting loads of passengers. These these pioneers. Look at this. They're all coming back. They're all the passengers are all flooding back. Uh, these pioneer zephyrs can only carry 52 passengers anyway. So I mean, we're probably going to max out pretty much straight away anyway. The actual island hopper route. Yeah. How is how is this route looking? I mean, this this is not looking. This is not looking so hot. I feel like I need to get a... I, I've talked a little bit about this before. About getting... About getting a high-speed route from... From, like, Grimsby all the way down into Burnley. And that, right now, seems more appealing than ever. As we, as we have to watch, like, three... Well, two... Well, technically three... Uh, like, two or three Pioneer Zephyrs just, like, queuing up behind one another. That's pretty irritating. It's pretty irritating to watch. Also, 185... 100... Wow. Loads and loads of passengers. Nothing that I'm interested in. Nothing that I'm interested in there. We're in 1958. The year is 1958, and there is not much that I'm particularly interested in uh, right now. Let me... 
Oh, that's because I, I ran out of money. All right, that's cool, I guess. I don't know, I don't know why my finances swing so unbelievably wildly. I, I have absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea whatsoever. Doesn't particularly matter though. Let me borrow another couple of million. Oh no, that was repaying. I didn't want to do that. I didn't absolutely not want to do that. I actually wanted to buy another Pioneer Zephyr. There we go. And equip it on the Burnley to Clearbury Mortimer Express. Because, I mean, let's be, let's be brutally honest, we're going to need it. Even though these trains travel faster, they carry, I mean, so few passengers that it is actually, it is actually a little bit of a problem. Why are you only going at 126 kilometers an hour? Oh my goodness. Minus eight million dollars? Why, yeah, why are you, why are you only going at 125 kilometers an hour? Is it a, is it a, is it a hill thing? Is it the fact that you're still coming out of a, out of a hill? I think it's probably leveling off right about now and therefore you can maybe think about traveling a little bit faster than 129. Oh, yes, that's the other thing. As soon as I have money, I'm just going to borrow some money. Sure. My suppliers are clearly behind as I'm... As I'm not being... As I'm not being given the respect that I deserve. Make sure... I need to make sure that absolutely everything here... Is... Yeah, make sure that absolutely everything prioritizes... I, again, I'm $8 million down the, down the drain. Wow. I mean, this, I feel like this is close to, like, prioritizing high-speed traffic. I just need some of my, I need some of my goods to arrive. I don't even know, I don't even know why I'm losing so much money. What's losing me money? Battle Doof to Gravesend is losing me $10 million. Stoned is losing me 3 million. I don't believe Stoned is losing me 3 million. Let me have a little look. Let me have a little look at Stoned, just briefly. And see why this is losing me so much money. If it's losing me money, then it just means, well, first of all, that there hasn't been a, a delivery in a while. Also, that's 167 outstanding bricks there. We're shipping 283 of them. Yep, that's fine. It says that we're transporting 100%. No, it says that we're transporting 88%. Why are we not transporting more? We should be. We definitely should be transporting more. Yeah, is there a little bit of a tailback on this... On this route? Is that why Stoned isn't making that much money? I guess there's a little bit of a tailback. It's not huge, though. It's not insurmountable. What other routes are losing me money? I mean, Battle Doof to uh, Battle Doof to Gravesend. Uh, it's, that's a that's an expensive that's an expensive route. How much food are we actually consuming in Gravesend? We're consuming three hundred and one food. How much food are we producing here? We're actually over. We're actually fine for food production. Right over here, so that's okay. All right. I think we're I think we're overshipping I think we're overshipping the Battle Doof to Gravesend route. Yeah, um let me let me sell off let me sell off this train. And let me also sell off this train right here. Right. That makes us that makes us a good amount of money. Makes us a good amount of money. It also like massively cuts our losses. Or it should massively cut our losses. We still have one very, very expensive, very fast train that runs on the route. But I think I'm I think I'm okay with that. Uh, Oily 3. Oily 3 definitely should be making money. Just probably hasn't made money for a little while. Same with Stoned. Burnley to Clearbury Mortimer. That will make money. Uh, Thule Reincarnated. That probably won't make money, actually, ever. But that's okay. Anyway, let, let me go back to... Let me go back to Burnley and see what the situation is over here. That is, that's a 52, that's a 52 passenger, 52 passenger load there. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a few more trains. I'm going to get a few more trains over here. I'm going to get, 
I'm going to get two more. Two more trains, and I'm going to stick them on Burnley, Cleobury, Mortimer Express. That's right. That's right. That's exactly where it's going. Burnley to Cleobury, Mortimer, the whole darned way. And that's honestly the, probably the maximum number of the maximum number of trains that this that this line can support. And given the massive increase in the number of trains that we're going to get, I'm going to have to add a healthy number of signals along the course of the track to make sure that everyone can uh, that everyone can get to where they need to go at an appropriate speed. Right. I'm so glad that I managed to fix that whole that whole thing with the airport not allowing track to be built near. That was immensely satisfying, I must say. Right. So, we're going to be building going to be building signals fairly regularly. Okay. There we go. That's that's looking pretty darn good. That's looking very, very darn good. How many passengers have we got waiting at this end? We got 196. Wowzers. That is quite something. We're not overcrowding the station quite yet, although we are close. We are very, very close. And so how many how many trains are on that route now? That's five trains on the route. And I think that's probably just about the max. Yeah, I think that's probably about the max. Don't think that we can really push it above that whatsoever. Uh, the next stage, the next stage is to think about what we want to do with the uh, the actual island hopper route. Uh, now, this also is going to need a drastic increase in the number of signals that we have on this specific stretch of track. I, I've had a little think about it. I mean, one of the options is to split it into, like, multiple sections. So there's one section which is really popular, as you will notice. It's the Grimsby to Burnley section. I mean, there's 150 passengers waiting there. There's not colossal demand, like, past past Grimsby. There is, you know, there's holiday demand. But, I mean, Heener, Heener and uh, Losco, there's lots of demand to go to Grimsby, but there's not much demand to go out to the island, you know, to the other to the other islands. So I feel like maybe we could split it into a route that goes between Heener and Losco, and then the other sort of two islands, and then another route which basically just goes to just goes to Grimsby and has the vast majority of trains running on it. I mean, how many trains have we got here? I think that's maybe what we do, right? I think that's maybe what we do. Have we got crossover here? We don't have crossover here. Let's put in a bit of crossover track. Yep, there we go. We'll do that. And then uh, actual island hopper. Well, we're going to leave actual island hopper for now. But instead, we'll start at Heener and Losco. We'll go to Grimsby. And then we'll literally just pummel it straight down into Burnley. And then we'll stop at Grimsby on the way back at the other platform. Yep. And then all the way back to Heener and Losco. Perfect. And this will be called the, the Proto... We'll call this the Proto Hopper in recognition of the fact that it came before the Island Hopper. Right? And then what we're basically going to do is we're going to take a bunch of trains that are currently on the Island Hopper. We'll take the two newer trains. In fact, no. i tell you what we'll do. We'll take the trains... Yes, this train can be stuck onto Proto Proto Hopper. That's right. And then also any other trains that are currently en route to Grimsby. Like you you can go on the Proto Hopper. Uh yep, yeah, it's in P. There we go. Do reduce the number of passengers on there, but that's that's fine. Is there one more is there one more train? There's not another train. So the Proto Hopper's now got two passenger services. But that's okay. Uh, you can also go on the Proto Hopper. 
there we go and so that reduces the number the number of passengers on all of those on all of those little routes but that's fine uh the other thing that i need to do is i just need to change i just need to change the route of the actual island hopper and instead of going to burnley and grimsby it just starts it just starts and ends at uh, at Hiner and Losco. And what we do is we install a little crossover point over here as well. And that... And that is how we solve... And that is how we solve that problem. Hold up. Nope. Actual island hopper... Yep, manage line. Uh, Hino and Losco. Yeah, cool. That's that's what we're after. Doesn't matter which side of the which side of the line we stop at. It's it's whatever. It's totally fine. Okay, so that should that should deal with the demand in the places where there actually is like a large amount of demand. It might take a little while to to come to fruition, but I mean it'll be worth it. What the heck? I mean this this is, looks abysmal, by the way. This underground sculpting that I had to do in order to get it's a very slight like color shift it looks pretty horrific the 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 underground construction that i had to endure in order to get the uh, the underground tunnels working yeah so not many people want to go to hina and losco okay you're waiting for it whoa you're waiting for a free path and you're waiting for a free path too Okay, I mean, this needs to change. There we go. Let's do that. Uh, let me just check to make sure that the Proto Hopper uses a different... Let me make sure that it uses a different line. Yeah, different line from the uh, from the other, the other route, the actual Hopper. There we go. That should just make for... A much easier state of affairs and let's introduce one more signal right over here yeah I mean look we might we might actually change the proto hopper at some point as I say the the route between Grimsby and Burnley is I mean it's tremendously popular a lot of people want to travel on it however I'm just, you know, I, I want to make sure, I want to make sure that the islands are getting a little bit of love as well, which is exactly why we're starting in, in, in Hina and Losco, and there's just a lot of, there's a lot of people who want to go to Burnley in, uh, in Hina and Losco. So here's hoping that it will, that it will prove to be a profitable, a profitable expansion, and it'll, it'll actually work. Okay, I like that change that we've made, that's, that's pretty darn good. How many passengers do we have waiting? third flight and second flight why don't we buy two brand new aircraft and uh and add them on eh right third flight second flight there we go it's as simple as that it's as simple as that let's just do it let's just get to two brand new aircraft straight away and hope that we can support that first flight do we have that many aircraft running on first flight i'm not entirely convinced that we do even goodlier i mean even goodlier at the moment seems to be seems to be working fine but the amount of goods that that are being supplied to burnley leaves a lot to be desired to be honest leaves a lot to be desired yeah even goodlier we are we're just not so great whoa what is this the canadair cl 44 is this a passenger aircraft? It's a cargo aircraft. Okay, it's a large cargo aircraft. Okay, I mean, this sort of changes the equation slightly, and it makes me really value having a... having a larger aircraft. I mean, hold up. Let me... let me take a quick little travel. A quick little travel over to the other aircraft the other uh, the other airport over here yeah see this is the this is the problem this is the problem we got too much we got too much activity happening right over here right 
Let me manage the vehicles on this line. Let's get them all... I don't want to get them all replaced. Because, I mean, that would kind of defeat the purpose. I mean, most of the... We're not actually super... We're not actually super over capacity, but we kind of are. Oh, we need a bigger airport. We need a bigger airport, and it needs to be... It needs to be done. It needs to be done, which means that we need a bigger airport at, like, both ends. I mean, I think we're just gonna have to live with it for now. I mean, the ideal response to this is... Is twofold. We need to do two things. And not first flight. We need to, first of all... You're waiting... You're waiting for... For takeoff. You're waiting for takeoff. You can be sold. You can be sold. You can be sold. You can be sold. You can be sold as well. You are a passenger aircraft. You've already got a full load of goods. And you're going to take off. Okay, I mean, what what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to utilize the very limited sort of like runway space that we have. And instead of trying to, instead of using the, you know, the, the old DC-3s, we'll use the, the newer, whatever the heck this thing is. I don't even, I don't even know what this, what this thing is. This is the, the Bristol Freighter. There we go. We'll try and utilize the Bristol Freighter a lot more going forward. Right. You get sold off. You get sold off. I know it looks like I'm currently, like, cutting down on all of our aircraft. There we go. And that leaves us with a good number. I mean, that still leaves us with a heck of a lot of aircraft. It leaves us with 28. I only cut it down by about 5. Right. And that's the Sky Train. DC-4... Yeah, get the get the Bristol Freighter. Forty-seven million dollars, by the way, for that entire replacement. Is it worth it? I hope so. Cause at the moment, I don't feel I don't feel like it is. I don't feel like we're getting I don't feel like we're I don't feel like we're in a good place with our with our cargo with our cargo setup. Which is kinda why I feel like maybe maybe it would be better if we just got a bigger airport. At both ends. Like a proper cargo airport in uh, in Burnley. A proper cargo airport in Gravesend. What the heck was that? You just avoided... You just avoided landing there, my dude. Yeah, and that would allow us to just use this small airport for passengers. Which I think is... I think is fine. Ah, I don't know. It's a it's a conundrum. It's a conundrum. It really is. But as you can see, we definitely have too much activity over here. Like there is just there's just too much happening. There's just too much happening. Look, I mean, aircraft number twelve has been waiting here for about twenty minutes to take off, and still hasn't been able to do so, because there's so many aircraft circling around to try and get down. And the reason that there are so many aircraft is that we just don't have enough aircraft on this route to cover to cover all of the goods. We still we're still overcrowding. Which I mean, can you even believe that? That's ridiculous, isn't it? That's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, I think that that's a that that's a task for the next episode. We're definitely going to have to mess around with that and see what we can do. Uh we're not overcrowding anything over here. That's all fine. 182 goods. Goodness gracious me. I mean, this is a proper, this is a proper operation. The whole, the whole task behind today's episode, which I, I believe I've accomplished actually to, to a fairly high standard, a fairly, a fairly higher standard than, than I usually accomplish, was, uh, was the Cleobury Mortimer route. And to be honest, it looks like we've pretty much got that demand satiated actually. Yeah, 52 out of 52. Everyone seems to be carrying 52 passengers. It looks like that's only 23 passengers. Okay, that's that's not a good sign. 
Maybe we've a little we've done we've overdone demand a little bit. But the proto hopper, the proto hopper looks good. Uh, I mean, things in Burnley, passenger numbers in Burnley looking a lot more respectable, a lot more down to earth than they were before. Uh, I might leave I might leave this many Zephyrs on this line for now, but I feel like it needs to be reduced by one. In fact, you know what? Let me just take this one off right now. Let me just take that one off right right now. Because there's going to be another train arriving fairly soon anyway, and we're we're already oversupplied. Okay, that's fine. I feel like I feel like that's an appropriate number of trains to have on this route. I I think we need I think we need more more passenger aircraft at our passenger airport. The problem is is that I really want to use this airport for cargo, and uh, I mean I can't. I really can't. I mean, I can, I, uh, there's nothing stopping me from doing it, but I know if I was to do it, then it would cause, it would cause a nightmare. It would, it would cause a, it would cause a total nightmare. How on earth is it that third flight is so high in demand? So high in demand that I'm actually going to go and buy another vehicle. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about third flight. Is the other... Is the other end? Is the other end like super, super busy? Wow, it's even busier. I didn't even believe it was possible. Okay, let's buy, let's buy two more aircraft then and just add them to third flight. Again, I don't want to, I don't want to accidentally end up oversupplying the entire, the entire aerospace industry. But I mean, we got to be, we got to be frank. These aircraft only carry twenty people a pop, so we can't be. We can't be too stingy. We can't be too stingy. Uh, right. The other thing that we need to consider was we added a whole bunch of uh, of track up here, a whole bunch of trains up up in this up in this section, and I need to make sure that it's all that it's all working fine. I mean, it looks fine for now. How many how many trains do I have on this track? Two trains. I feel like that's probably a little bit of an undersupply. We should probably think about getting some more trains on this specific route. There does seem to be a rather large number of passengers waiting. I also need to expand to Ferndown and Chagford, but we're going to do that with the Medlar the Medlar with Wesham route, which we've uh, which we've already sort of established. The Medlar with Wesham branch, I should say, which we've already established. But again, I feel like that's not a not an objective for this episode. I honestly feel like that's a pretty good place to wrap this episode up because I mean Look, we accomplished the main objective. The main objective was to high speedify the uh, the Cleobury Mortimer to Burnley route. We've ended up doing that. We've ended up oversupplying even the the route with uh, with with a few too many trains. But you know what? Don't hold that against me. Because I mean, this route is is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm actually really happy with how it worked out. And as I say, it's it's 300 kilometers an hour from start to finish, and that's. That's a pretty unique experience. That's a pretty unique experience. We don't we don't have a lot of a lot of 300 kilometer an hour end to end routes, but on this occasion we actually do. We also reintroduced the I say reintroduced. We introduced the proto hopper, which I think is I think is probably the best thing that we could possibly do under any circumstances. We isolate the the bits that are going to end up being quite expensive, and uh, and we've added on extra capacity for the trains, which we know are. Uh, which we are we, we've added extra capacity to the routes which we know are uh, are quite busy I mean how many passengers are on this train 12 passengers. Yeah, see now we're now we're keeping our losses to a minimum I mean there is certainly demand especially all the way from uh, from with Witham, all the way over there uh, And Hina and Losco there's a lot of demand to go to the bigger towns, but you know th There's not much demand to go to the little towns Understandable to be honest understandable but it's something to consider, and I think that you know we're 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 doing a good job of cutting our losses. Definitely doing a good job of cutting our losses. I think what's going to be in store for us in the next episode? Well, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a brand new airport, but it's going to be an out of town airport. I think probably like over here. I mean, if I was to guess, if I was to guess, I feel like it would be, it would be here. 
doesn't have to be super far away, but I don't really want to, like, excavate a whole bunch of land. And, I mean, maybe over, maybe over here. Some, some sort of orientation like, uh, like that. Two brand new vehicles. De Halloween Comet. Oh my goodness, that is fantastic. That is an upgraded passenger aircraft. That I know for a fact. Uh, what is that? 21 people? And it travels basically at double the speed. Double the speed of the Lockheed Super Constellation. Oh my goodness. I'm very interested. Well, let's deal with all things aircraft in the next episode. Uh, because for now, ladies and gents, we're going to wrap this episode up right over here. Thank you oh so much for watching this episode of Transport Fever 2. My name, of course, has been Obita Potato. Thanks as ever to my fantastic Patreon supporters who help make videos like this possible. And I will see you next time. Bye.